Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Roll. All right, I'm gonna do another Bites and Nibbles segment today and this is gonna be another Instant Pot recipe. Now you may be noticing in the upcoming weeks that I'm gonna probably be doing a whole bunch of Instant Pot recipes because as you know, sometime, hopefully in the very near future, I'm gonna make a trip back to California to pick up Flash, to pick up some things I inherited from my father and also to visit family. And one of the things that my mom has asked me to do when I do go to California is help her become a little less intimidated with her Instant Pot. So I'm gonna kind of pack up on some of the uh, Instant Pot recipes right now you know, over the next few weeks, just so that when she does get to the point where she's a little less fearful of the thing, she'll have a bunch of things to look at and a bunch of things to try. And today's recipe is gonna be mushroom, potato, and beef stew. And so it has all sorts of good veggies in it. And I got it out of one of my Instant Pot recipe books and it looks pretty good. Let's look at the ingredients. Now to begin with, I'm going to double this recipe uh, primarily because it looks really good and I can always freeze it and I'm also a little bit concerned that a single batch of the recipe uh, might not work exactly right because I have a really really big instant pot and sometimes you know these single batch recipes they work better if you have a smaller model but I'm going to double it in this case and uh, that means we'll have a little bit to freeze and it'll, be, and it'll, it'll last for a while. So here are the ingredients. Uh, first off, we're gonna have some uh, stew beef. It's already cut, cut into little chunks, which is good. The recipe actually calls for eight potatoes, but since I have really big, massively huge potatoes, I'm gonna do four, uh, two onions, uh, two cups of beef broth, some red wine, some olive oil, the mushrooms, of course, some canned tomatoes, celery and carrots, uh, garlic clove, salt, pepper, and flour, salt and pepper to taste. I'm going to actually omit the salt because I don't really need it and I don't really think it adds anything to the flavor. Uh, but I'm going to put a fair amount of pepper in it. We're going to have some paprika, some thyme, and a couple of bay leaves. So let's get going on this. Oh, and I forgot. One instant pot. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add about four tablespoons of olive oil to my instant pot. I'm just going to kind of eyeball that. That's about four tablespoons. And then we're going to press the saute button and we're going to allow the oil to heat up. And while the oil is heating up, I'm going to place the, uh, the stew beef in a large one quart Ziploc bag. And I'm going to pour the flour and salt and pepper. Like I said, I'm not using salt, but just pretend it's in there. I'm just going to pour that in there. We're going to seal the whole thing up and I'm just going to kind of mix everything together, kind of using the shake and bake technique. Shake, 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 shake your beef stew, shake your beef stew. Sorry, lame joke. Now that my oil is nice and heated up and uh, my beef is coated, I'm just going to basically put the beef into the instant pot and we are gonna saute it for five to seven minutes until the beef is nice and brown. All right, a little time has passed and our beef is starting to look pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it off the Instant Pot right now and we're gonna put it aside because the next thing we're gonna do is prepare the veggies. All right, now that we got our uh, beef put aside, um, I actually prepared all the veggies ahead of time and you'll probably wanna do that too because that takes a few minutes. Without even cleaning out the pot, I'm gonna pour all the veggies. So I got my potatoes, my carrots, celery, and onions. My mushrooms and my garlic. I'm gonna put that all in there and we're gonna kind of mix that up and just kind of keep it, uh, get it nice and soft in there. And this will take a few minutes also. So I'll come back to you in a few minutes. All right, so after I got all the veggies into the pot there, I realized there's way more material here than I thought there was gonna be. So I'm actually gonna break this into two parts. I probably could have stuck with just a single single uh, dose of the recipe here but what I've done is I've taken half the veggies out and we're gonna do this in two phases here so we'll do two single doses 
uh, and we'll just basically repeat this process twice and I'm going to half the remaining uh, uh, ingredients, the, uh, the beef broth, I'll put half the beef in when that time comes, half of the uh, spices and we'll do this in two parts and then combine it all together uh, afterwards. You know, sometimes it happens, you, you, you know, I, I think it's a, you know, there's the old saying that sometimes your eyes are bigger than your stomach. Well, it looks like in this case, my eyes were bigger than my Instant Pot. So, uh, that's okay, we can deal with this, it'll still work, uh, it's just going to take a little longer, and uh, we'll just have a lot more of it. So, that's good. Catch up with you in a few. Alright, I think our veggies are looking pretty good, I think they're about ready to go. Like I said, about half of the, re the veggies, we'll, I guess we'll do the rest of it later. What I've done is I've measured out the uh, tomatoes and the uh, beef broth. I have my red wine there. I have my paprika, my thyme, and my bay leaves, and half of my meat. And I'm going to put all the rest of that in here. And my red wine. And my beef. And I'm just going to kind of mix that all together. And I'm going to hit the cancel on here to stop the saute mode. Alright, I got the lid on. We're going to seal it. I'm going to press the meat stew button and it's already set for 35 minutes. That's how long we want to run. Um, I'm going to turn off the keep warm function here. It's on high pressure. So we're just going to let it cook for 35 minutes and we'll come back later. See you then. All right, so uh, 35 minutes have passed now, and uh, as I've mentioned before, there's two ways of venting this thing. There's a quick release where you push this button and the pressure is released immediately, and there's a slow or natural release. The instructions here say we want to do a natural release for 10 minutes. So we're going to give this 10 minutes to kind of naturally vent its pressure. Fortunately, what will happen is the timer will uh, start now in a moment. Uh, and uh, keep track of how long it's been naturally releasing so we can come in uh, and let it vent normally for a while and then we'll quick release the rest of the pressure. So I'll see you in about 10 minutes. All right, 10 minutes has passed and so I'm gonna quick release the rest of the pressure. Seems like there was a fair amount of pressure left in that thing, huh? When the little pink button drops, the pressure is released. Oh yeah, fogging up my camera here. That looks pretty good though, doesn't it? So what I'm going to do, like I said, I've got to still prepare the second half of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour this into another pot and uh, we're going to finish the second half of this and get that cooking. And then we'll come back and give this a taste test. All right, so I've completed my second batch of this. Uh, as you recall, I had to kind of split it in half when I discovered my eyes were bigger than my Instant Pot. Uh, but what I've done is mixed it all together now and I've done a little bit more seasoning also. Um, they kind of say during the recipe that you want to do the seasoning ahead of time, but I kind of prefer to do it afterwards because you get kind of a better idea. You can give it a little taste test and uh, see what it seem, what seems right for you. Uh, I didn't really do much with the salt. I thought it was pretty good that way, uh, but I did add a little bit of pepper. And I think it's got a nice little bite to it. It's not, you know, you don't really want a beef stew to be you know spicy or anything but it's got a little bit of a pepper taste to it and I think it's just about right so uh, 
This is a nice big, uh, you know, I probably got a gallon or a gallon and a half of this stuff. That'll go into the freezer really well, and we'll pull it out in little batches as we need it. But right now, I think I'm going to put it in a bowl, and let's take a taste test. All right, so it's time for the all-important taste test. Now, be advised, when this stuff comes out of the Instant Pot, it's really, really hot. So you're going to want to let it cool off a little bit, or you will be hating life when you take that first bite. Now, fortunately, since I did it in two batches, the first batch kind of had a little chance to cool off in my uh, big uh, kettle over there. And then when I mixed the second half in there, it kind of averaged out a little bit. So this is at a real good temperature right now. I think it's just about right for eating. And uh, let's give it our taste test here. Nice big chunk of beef here on the top here. Actually, that's a mushroom. So I'm gonna get a mushroom and, and some beef here and let's just try this out. Yeah, very good. Um, very happy with this. It's got a good, uh, you can taste all the stuff in there. I mean, I just had a mushroom and the beef. I haven't really gotten to the potatoes yet or any of the other veggies or any of the fun stuff that's in there. But it's got good flavor. It's not too overwhelming on anything. It's exactly what you'd want in a beef stew. So I definitely recommend this. Uh, you know, maybe you don't need to make a, you know, double the recipe the way I did. Uh, I have a big Instant Pot and it was still a little too much. But the beauty is I did get it to work. It's all mixed up now and this should freeze really well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into individual containers and um, we'll have this over the next few weeks. This should be really good. So definitely recommend this one. Try it out. I'll put the recipe in the description below. Uh, let me know what you think on it. Uh, and uh, like I said, this one's for my mom, so she can kind of be get, get used to some of the things that she likes to do. Um, and once she gets to the point where she's comfortable with the Instant Pot, hopefully she'll be able to do something like this and make it work out real well. So I think that's all that I have for tonight. Uh, thank you as always for watching, and I'll see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Bon appetit. Now one other thing before I end this video. Uh, my friend Bess sent me another video of Flash the other day and I was really excited with something I saw on here because it was a behavior from Flash that I'd never seen before. Flash has always been timid around people, around other animals, around anything. And anything got anywhere near her, she'd just pull into her shell and hide and wait it out. Well, apparently Flash has been living in Bess' yard now for the last year with Bess' dog Moxie and apparently they've become best friends. This video shows really interesting behavior from Flash because Moxie and Flash are right next to each other and uh, in fact Moxie is at some points touching Flash and Flash doesn't seem to be bothered by it. She's just chomping on her lettuce. Check this out. This is kind of fun. Poor Flash. She has to now share with my dog.
Alright, I'm gonna go lock Moxie up so Flash can get more food. <laughs> 